Thank you very much for joining us in our Sunday School broadcast for Sunday the 21st of August 2022. Our topic is Nebuchadnezzar's arrogance. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, O oh God. We come and you will come afresh. We know that you have the word of life. We pray, Jehovah God, that you instruct us today. We pray, Lord, that you help us to understand. And we pray that you give us the grace to do that which you instruct us today. Thank you, Father, for answering us. For we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, Nebuchadnezzar's arrogance. We're going to take our first reading from Daniel chapter 4. Daniel 4. 1 to 3 to start with. Nebuchadnezzar the king to all peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied to you. I thought it good to declare the signs and wonders that the Most High has worked for me. How great are his signs and how mighty his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation amen let's go to verses 10 to 17. these were the visions of my head while on my bed i was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great the tree grew and became strong its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Its leaves were lovely, its fruit abundant, and in it was food for all. The beasts of the field found shade under it, the birds of the heavens dwelt in its branches, and all the flesh was fed from it. I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. He cried aloud and said thus, Chop down the tree and cut off its branches. Strip off its leaves and scatter its fruit. Let the beasts get out from under it and the birds from its branches. Nevertheless, leave the storm and roots in the earth, bound with the band of iron and bronze. In the tender grass of the field, let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let him graze with the beast on the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from that of a man. Let him be given the heart of a beast, and let seven times pass over him. This decision is by the decree of the watchers, and the sentence by the word of the Holy One in order that the living may know mm -hmm. that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, gives it to whomever he will, and sets over it the lowest of men. Praise the Lord. Let's stop there for now. We are looking at King Nebuchadnezzar's pride, arrogance. Now, the more successful people are the more arrogant they tend to be people tend to be more humble when there is nothing they can do any kind of job they can even beg anybody but once success starts coming in that is when the problem comes my brother, are you praying to be successful? Add to that your prayer, the grace to be humble, even in success. Are you beginning to be successful? Pray that God will keep you humble throughout. Have you become successful? Therefore, you are an inch to falling off 
the cliff of pride and arrogance. This is very, very serious because arrogance, pride, is one of the biggest sins that there is that is known to man. That is why we must avoid it like a plague. Let us go to Isaiah, Isaiah 14, verses 12. To 15 Isaiah 14 12 to 15 how you are fallen from heaven O Lucifer son of the morning how you are cut down to the ground you who weakened the nations for you have said in your heart I will ascend into heaven I will exalt my throne above the stars of God I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the further sides of the north i will ascend above the heights of the cloud i will be like the most high yet shall be brought yet you shall be brought down to shiloh and the lowest depth of pit now the first sin ever committed in the whole of creation in the whole of universe was in theft it wasn't adultery. It wasn't even lying. The first thing ever committed is the sin of pride. Again, we go back to success. If you read from the beginning of that chapter, God had made Satan, Lucifer, so beautiful, so able, so useful, that it went into his head. Ambition is not a bad thing. Wishing to succeed is not a bad thing. But like I said before, we need to watch it. Because ambition, the drive to succeed, is just next door to pride and arrogance. Why does arrogance hurt God so much? Why does God hate pride so much? We are going to come to that, but let us look at how does it manifest, how do we know, how do you know, how do I know that I am beginning to be proud. Number one, the Bible says it is a thing of the heart. Lucifer thought in his heart, that is where it begins, that is where every pride begins. And that is why the Bible says we should guard our heart and our mind with all diligence for out of it come issues of life, for success, for failure. When we are talking about pride and humility, it does not, it has very little to do with your self-esteem. Of course, as a child of God, we must always hold our heads high. We must always know that we are useful. The most precious commodity, like we said last week, that God has on the planet is the human being. Not the cars, not the aeroplanes. The most precious thing that God has on the planet it is you and it's me. So much so that God was willing to pay all the prize, the highest, the biggest, the best, to make sure that you and I come to him. He bought us with his own life. How precious are we? But when you hear somebody say, do you know who I am? Pride. We must be very, very careful. Pride is a serious thing so much so that Bible says it goes before a fall we must always watch our hearts John the Baptist said he must increase while I decrease he said Jesus must increase Lord keep increasing let me decrease let the I that I am 
begin to increase, begin to decrease while you decrease. God said to um, Saul, He said, when you were small in your own eyes, when you knew that you were nothing, when you were humble, I made you king. But that has gone into your head. Pride is a dangerous thing. We must watch it. It's a thing of the heart. And then it begins to come out from the way we talk. It begins to come out. <laughs> Somebody, a chief, and he was happy. And I didn't know why he was angry. What's the problem? He said, I am high chief. I am not chief. I am high, the highest one. Hey, children of God, we must watch it. Titles. Titles. Oh, God. And even in the church, a lot of the titles that we give and a lot of the titles that people have, nothing wrong with them, but it can make people go, it can make people go crazy and become proud. Successful ministers, when you are successful, even in the ministry, that is what, that is where problem starts. An American said that he was able to handle the poverty test that when he was poor, he didn't have a problem. But when money started coming in as a minister, pride set in and he said he nearly failed the prosperity test. Now, we go back to what we said before. God hates pride. Why? Satan says, Hey, I want to be like the Most High God. Who do you want to be like and why? Satan says, Is it only God that will sit on that seat? And you have a lot of people that eye the seat of their ogre, not in a positive way. They want to push him down because they want to go over there. Come and see. Now there is there is there are political campaigns in Nigeria. Why do you want the post? Somebody needs to occupy that. There's no doubt about that. And so, if you aspire to be president, there's nothing wrong with that. But why? And can you handle the pride that goes with it? Power. Power. Position. Money. Praise the Lord. When you and I exhibit pride, God remembers that first sin of revolt of Satan because of pride. That is why God hates it. Anytime any of us become pride, it doesn't matter how little we manifest it. It reminds God of Satan wanting to overthrow him in heaven. That is what happens. That is why it is so dangerous. By the time, once you are proud, you are putting yourself against God, just as Satan did. Satan is not just the father of liars. He is the father of pride as well. We really need to be careful. Now, going back to our story, Nebuchadnezzar had the dream. God had warned him a year ahead. Hey, you are the head of gold. You are successful. But then you are now proud. You don't know. And thank God, Nebuchadnezzar said in letter, he says, the most high God that the, that the earth, the whole earth might know, that the most high God rules, reigns in the affairs of men. And he gives the kingdom of the earth to whomsoever he wills. We'll come back. We'll come back to that. Let us look at the problems of pride. The problems. Let's look at First Peter, First Peter five. Begin to read from uh, First Peter five. From one. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I who am a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. And also a partaker of the glory that will be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God which is among you, serving as overseers, not by compulsion, but willingly, 
not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, nor as being lords over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the, she the, the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to the elders. Yes, all of you, be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Amen. That is a scripture everybody knows, or most people know. Cast your cares upon the Lord, because He cares for you. But that's not where it starts. If you read from up, it says we must humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, the almighty hand of God. He says, for God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. The question you and I have to answer is, what would it be? Would it be proud? Would it be pride so that God will resist us? Or would it be humility so that God can give us grace and more and more grace? A lot of ministers, a lot of Christians, we're not talking about unbelievers, a lot of Christians are under the resistance of God. A lot of Christians, more than we know, God is just, God just put a break on you. And you can't do anything and you bind and lose and you fast and you pray and you don't know why hey check your heart go back to God and say God you are the one resisting me if you are not the one resisting me kick out the resistance because you can't the danger the biggest danger of pride is that God himself resists you. One Satan can lay you into the realm of pride. He goes on. He has finished his job because God himself will resist you. Put a break on you until you realize that, hey, something is wrong here. God resists. And none of us, none of us, nobody will want God to resist them. Where would you go? He's the... He is the final arbiter. He is the, he is the last bus stop. That is the main problem of pride. And don't think, you that is listening to me, you that is watching, don't think it cannot happen to me. No. Once you think it cannot happen to you, you are proud already. It can happen to you. That's, that's true. It can happen to anybody. That is why we need to beware of it because it happens subtly, just small by small, small by small. The way we dress, you buy the most expensive clothes, even if you have borrowed money to do it. What are you, who are you trying to impress? And when you see some of us Christians, you go like that, you go like that. Hey. What was this song? Um, sorry. But, he said, Dugao, Bugao. <laughs> and they go like that. That is how a lot of Christians are. You are the biggest around. No, you are not. No, you are not. Even if your ministry is the best and is the hugest, no, that doesn't make you the biggest person. It is not the gift that defines you. It is your heart. It is the humility. It is the fruit. That is what defines a person before God. Not the size of your ministry. Not the size of the car you have. Not the size of your congregation. No. Those are not the things that define us before God. What defines us is the fruit. Humility. Love. Kindness. Patience. That is what defines us before God. That is what determines how big we are. 
boasting. When somebody starts boasting, that is what Nebuchadnezzar did. He was proud. But how did his pride come out? He said, is this not Babylon, the greatest kingdom of the earth that I have built by my own power? God said, uh-uh. Uh-uh. Now you're finished. And Nebuchadnezzar finished. Let us read Jeremiah 9. Jeremiah chapter 9 and in verse 23. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom, let not the mighty man glory in his might, mm. nor let the rich man glory in his riches, but let him who glories in this, that he understands and knows me, that I am the Lord, exercising loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth, for in this I delight says the Lord. Amen. Are you wise? God has given it to you. It is not a reason to boast. Do you have money? God has given it to you. It doesn't matter. Even if you stole the money, one, one wave of God's finger, you would have been caught and killed. God just gave you a little more time. To see whether you will repent. Are you handsome? Are you are you beautiful? That is the handiwork of God. You didn't know when it happened. Are you strong and powerful? Do you have a high position? God has lifted you there. The Bible says that, and Nebuchadnezzar quoted, he says, The most high God reigns in the affairs of men. And he gives it to whomsoever he wills. It doesn't matter how secure you think you are in your position. If God says, come down now, you come down that minute. Pilate was, he was boasting. And they said, oh, that is not the voice of man. It is the voice of a God. Because, eh, so we are now to our herald. And he brought him down, Herod, and he died instantly. Oh my God, that God has not changed. If he gets angry, he gets angry. And they fear this God. We really need to be very, very careful. Let us boast that we know him, that he is God that exercises righteousness. And who knows God? Who is it that knows God? It's not somebody that necessarily can quote the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation and preach the best sermons. No. <laughs> Knowing God, I say again, is having the joy of God in your heart. It's having the peace of God in your heart. It's having the, the kindness of God. It is having the love of God. It is having the patience of God. It is having the perseverance of God. It is showing mercy. That is the person that knows God. Without those, it doesn't matter. Paul says, we're just noisemakers if we don't have these things. Praise the Lord. Now, Nebuchadnezzar, God said, okay, for one year, I want you. And now, that's the end. You're going into the bush. You're living there like an animal for seven seasons. I believe that was seven years. And he went in. Can you imagine a king? The king, God even called him the king of kings. He was ruler of so many nations. Becoming mad and going and starts eating grass for seven years. Boy. And then when he repented, you don't want to go through that before you return to your senses. Let us try and do it now. Let us be serious about asking God to humble us, praise the Lord. And don't make the mistake and say, because I'm not mad yet, I'm not uh, proud. No, that is the grace of God. That is the mercy of God. Why? God is merciful. Let's look at that Daniel again, Daniel 4. And only verse 27. Therefore, O king, 
let my advice be acceptable to you. Break off your sins mm. by being righteous and your iniquities by showing mercy to the poor. Perhaps there may be a lengthening of your prosperity. Amen. What do we need to do? We need to repent. We need to repent. You see, in uh, Ezekiel, we're not going to read that because of our time. Ezekiel 33, 14 to 16, it says, When I say to a man, you will surely die. And God says, if that person repents and humbles himself and changes his ways, God says, I forgive. Because God is more merciful than we know. And it is because of this mercy of God, the Bible says, that we are not consumed. Not because we are not proud. That is why every day we need to humble ourselves and say, God, please help me to be, to be humble. And Lord, for all the pride I have shown, please forgive me. Let us read finally Philippians 2. Philippians 2, beginning to read from verse 5. Philippians 2. This is what will help you and I, if we know this scripture. Philippians 2. From verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a born servant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross therefore god also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every oil every name that at the name of jesus every knee shall bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth that Every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise the Lord. Jesus was God. Is God when he was on earth. Was God. Remains God. Yet, the Bible says he so humbled himself. And started saying yes sir to the Father and to the Holy Ghost. And the way you walk because he wanted to demonstrate to us this is what life should be like this is who you should be like wash the dirty feet of his disciples did all sorts of things and finally agreed to die on the cross like a thief and the council of heaven sat god the father god the holy spirit and they said what shall we do to this person Let's give him a name that is higher than every other name that we have. So that everybody who will come to us will come through that name. Anybody that will give 10 naira will have to pray in that name. That is why we pray in the name of Jesus because God has given him a name, a name that is higher than every other name. Why? Because of humility. My brother, my sister, we need to be humble. So that God will exalt us. Pride goes before a fall. But humility, you can't beat a humble man. You can't overcome him. Let us pray. Are you born again? If you're not, pray this simple prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. Forgive all my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Cancel it from the book of death. Come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. And lead me to eternity. Are you a Christian already? Say to God, every act of pride, I am really sorry. And I'm praying that same prayer. Anytime I have shown pride, I have shown the attribute number one of Satan. And God, I am sorry. Forgive me. Forgive my brethren. Forgive every one of us for all the pride that we have shown and is any one of us sick in the body lord i pray that you heal us and receive all the glory thank you for answering us because we have prayed in jesus name amen